candidates gathered from three different states, your committee has chosen as their selection for your queen of beauty, as Miss Ohio Valley for this year, your own fair daughter, Miss Myra Norman. I salute you, Miss Norman. You are the winner who goes to Hollywood to be screen tested for a movie contract. Isn't she wonderful? Did you get a load of that conceit written all over Myra's pen? Uh, what'd you say? She isn't I the most is she wonderful. The rules of the contest provide that you must go properly chaperoned. And whom have you chosen as companion for our queen of beauty on her trip to Hollywood, Miss Norman? Uh, well, let me see. Uh, my sister Sue. Oh, isn't that grand? You couldn't have made a better choice, Miss Norman. In fact, why, who knows? You might even become a star, and your sister Sue could be your stand-in. <laughs> you think you're kidding? That's just how it's going to be. Well, you see? What did I tell you? And she's going to let me be her stand-in, too. Well, isn't she big-hearted? In case you don't know it, a stand-in is like a horse in a polo game. Does all the dirty work, but gets none of the credit. to telephone me all about you girls. Also told me about that man who promoted the beauty contest asserting you in Salt Lake City. Too bad these promoters have to use Hollywood for their schemes. Going around the country defrauding people. They uh, said we might stay here rather inexpensively. We don't have very much money left. Well, don't you worry about that. You see, all my girls contribute when they can, somehow manage. It's a tradition here that whoever works helps all the rest. Well, I'm sure it won't be very long until I'm making a salary. I'm sure it won't. Now, perhaps you girls would like to go upstairs and get settled, and then afterwards I'll let you meet all the rest of the girls. you, didn't I? Ah, you see the way I took that fall? Boy, it's right on the beam, Mickey. Mm -hmm. That part's right down your alley. Thanks, honey. Oh, a couple of new citizens. Yes, yeah. Nikki. This is Myra and Sue Norman. This is Nikki Martin, your roommate. And incidentally, chief of police of Girls Town. How are you? You all right? Oh, yes, thanks. That is, uh, I think I am. Will I check up? Nikki's our stunt girl. She's just showing the girls how she's going to double for Laurie, the girl who gets murdered in the picture, mm, Nation of Flame. I've read that book. Oh, that's a wonderful part. Have they cast it yet? Oh, haven't you heard? Lionel Fontaine, the boy wonder, is going to direct it. He wants to know for the part. The pet publicity stunt of his. And I'm Sally. Mother Lorraine's taking care of me. She's going to help me be a great actress like she was. <laughs> oh, I have a better one, darling. That's splendid. I think you're pretty cute. 
Wasn't that Lionel Fontaine who found Gloria Blair in a mob scene? Yes, and every girl in town is rehearsing for this part, but Nikki's the only one that's sure of getting it. <laughs> or at least the hard part of it. Yeah, I take the bump, somebody else takes the bath. Oh, well, a tough way to make an easy living. <laughs> You'll get used to Nikki. She's always either falling downstairs or jumping out of windows or killing herself some way every week. <laughs> yeah, I have to die to live. Oh, well, come on, girls. I'll show you the blue room. Come on. Come on, Nikki. You'll help with the bag here. All right. Here, let me help you. They're pretty heavy, Nikki. Oh, heavy. Why, I've had heavier bags than these under my eyes. Come on. <laughs> Mother Lorraine. What, dear? Do you think you really should take any more girls? You have your hands full now. Oh, we haven't got so many. Always room for a couple of more. I like the little one. I think she's keen. Oh, do you now? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Don't you girls worry about me. I'm a lot stronger than you think I am. Well, anyway, I think the younger one is nice. Well, you like the younger one, too. Mm -hmm. I think they're both nice. <laughs> Welcome to Shangri-La. Is this our room? Oh, I like it. I thought you would. Pretty cozy, isn't it? Smells like a stable. Hmm. Funny, I never noticed it before. Do you, uh, keep your horse in here, too? Well, yes, but you see, the Board of Health made me take him out. Said it wasn't healthy for the horse. Sue, so take my things out. Uh-uh, that's my bed. Yours is over here. Are, uh, all these pictures of you? Yes, you like them? Well, they, uh, they don't exactly look like you. Is that bad? I made up to look like the stars I double for. Would you mind hanging them over there? I'd like to put mine up. Not at all. Boyfriend? No, picture's taken when I won different beauty contests. Oh. You know, she was Miss Ohio Valley. Uh, no. I was queen of beauty this year. Hmm. Where may I put this? Uh, under the bed. Oh, hello. Hello. Hello, Myra. Did you find the studio? Yes, and I think I have an appointment with Lionel Fontaine for a test. Oh, good. Did he say so? Well, no, I haven't exactly seen him yet, but I will. And when I get started, I'm going to help Girls Town plenty. There's nothing like giving away money you haven't got, is there, Myra? Listen, Nikki. Myra, I wouldn't count too much on the part. You know, competition is always very keen. There's so many things that can influence the outcome besides merit. Oh, I wouldn't worry about that, Mother Lorraine. If Myra doesn't get the lorry part, there's one job she's a cinch to get. And I do mean cinch. What have you got in mind, Nikki? Oh, you know, with Myra's thing, and, uh, to these doors past the most beautiful girls in the world. <laughs> you mean Earl Cowell's review? Uh-uh. The meat trees drive in on the other corner. Boy, oh boy, would you knock them cold with your figure in Dimitri's uniform. <laughs> and I understand they pay big tips, too. Why, that's a splendid idea, Nikki, dear. You know, you're really a very sweet person. In fact, I intend to do something about that. Well, how do I like that? Hi, Ohio Valley. Hello. Girls, do you know how I can meet Lionel Fontaine? Lionel Fontaine? Uh -huh, I want to talk to him about that lorry part. I'm sure he wants to see you. Well, the usual way is through an agent. Yes, don't you have one? No, I haven't decided who I want yet. Well, it's not so easy to get an agent to do anything for you, except get your dinner date. Oh, well, I don't know. With Myra's uh, publicity, she might be able to get some attention. I think I know an agent who might be interested in her type. Who? Kenny Lane. Yes, you do know Kenny pretty well. Is he, is he really an important agent, Nikki? Why, he does business at every studio in town. I don't know if he'd be interested in you, but I'll talk to him about you. Really? Mm -hmm. Oh, Nikki, you're sweet. Thank you. <laughs> I think I'll phone him now. <laughs> ah, I want a new agent. Mine Steve. Yeah. You eat an awful lot for the amount of money you earn, Hercules. <laughs> Kenny Lane speaking. I want a new strip tea. Just a minute, Nikki. Good night, Hercules. Go ahead, Nikki. Kenny, I've got a real find for you. She's a beauty. What is it? A cat. A cat? Well, I can get all I want from the lion farm. Oh, but you haven't got one like this. She's really gorgeous. Yeah? Does she know any tricks? Why, she's almost human. Well, maybe I can do something with her, Nikki. Who's got her? Oh, someone I just ran into. 
I'll send her right over with some pictures. Bye. Pretty good job. Thanks. You know, Sue, when I think of all that Mother Lorraine has done for us and for the girls, I feel guilty about not being able to contribute something. Um, I've decided to get a job while waiting for the lorry part. Do you know where to get one? Yes, at Dimitri's driving. As a waitress? You will not. Look, Myra, now I'm starting out on a wonderful career in pictures. Besides, you know how you hated being a waitress back home. Oh, I know, but Sue... No I... buts about it. Now you've got enough to do as it is. I know. I'll get the job myself at Dimitri's. Where is it? Kid! I got good news for you. Kenny Lane will see you, but you got to go right away because she's very busy. Oh, isn't that wonderful? Oh, that's wonderful, Nikki. Only, what do I wear? Wear what you got on. No, I think you ought to wear a bathing suit. I'm sure your figure will impress him. Yes. I'd always wear a bathing suit or a plain suit on an interview. Can she go around in a bathing suit? Oh, don't be so naive, Sue. If an agent has to sell you to a studio, he has to know what kind of figure you have, after all. But you, but you don't have to. All you do is wear your dress over your suit. When you get there, you just slip out of it. Oh, well. Wait a minute. What are you going to do? Well, you know what Nikki said. Oh, I know, but don't you think you'd better wait till you get inside? Silly, do you think I'm going to dress in front of him? Oh, I don't know. I, I don't feel right about that. Oh, quiet. Okay. Sure, Sam. She'll do anything you want her to. Come in. Yeah? Clean? Of course Gladys is clean. I gave her a bath myself this morning. Am I embarrassed? <laughs> uh, I'll call you later, Sam. The Empire State Building just walked in. Hello. Are you Kenny Lane? Yeah, that's right. What can I do for you? I'm Myra Norman. Nikki Martin phoned you about me. Oh. Oh, yes, yes, of course. Uh, won't you sit down? I do. Oh, hello. Must be uh, nice at the beach today. <laughs> oh, uh, yes, it, it is. Did you bring the pictures? Me too, the pictures. Thank you. Where's the cat? What cat? The cat, the lion. Look, lady, when I sell animals to a studio, they want to see their pictures, not the owners. <laughs> what are you talking about? Look, do you or don't you own a lion? Of course I don't own a lion. Uh, are you crazy? Well, no. Somebody is, or... Is this a gag? Look, are you an agent? Well, certainly I'm an agent, but I only handle birds and animals. Animals? What do you think? Oh, I could kill Nikki for this. Sending me to an agent who's only a dog catcher or something. A dog catcher? Well, how do I like that? Listen here, young lady. For your information, I prefer to handle animals. Glamour girls are four bucks a dozen around here, and I discovered a long time ago you can't make any money out of them. But animals never run out in their contracts, and they always pay their commissions. Oh, I could kill Nikki for this. Sending me to an agent who can't even get me past the studio gate. Come on. Come on, Sue. Listen, Princess, I can get you in any studio in town. If I want to, I... <coughs> Carmichael, look what you've done. <laughs> you know, Mr. Fontaine, the director is looking for a girl to play Laurie in The Nation of Flame? I'll say I do. I used to practically support him playing Jim Rummy when he came out from Broadway last year. Well, uh... Perhaps you could get him to arrange a test for me. Uh, maybe I could. Uh, <clears throat> what is your background? Any stage or stock experience? Of course. I'm a good actress. She was simply wonderful in all our high school plays. Well, you look fairly photogenic to me. Uh, and you put on a pretty good act when you came in here, too. <laughs> I'll give Fontaine a ring. Hey, they're coming! They're coming! Are you all ready? Yes, ma'am. Welcome, Welcome Miss Ohio Valley!
home. Yeah, did you make the grave? Did I have your autograph? The Glamour Girls of Girls Town welcome you, dear. Oh, you darling, how can I ever thank you? Oh, think nothing of it. Say, you feeling all right? Oh, I feel wonderful, thanks to you. Me? Oh, it was grand of you to send me to Kenny. He's awfully sweet. You know, you really have some influential friends. He was so charming. And I'm very grateful to you, Nikki. Thanks so much. Well, how do I like that? Now, look at her throw the curves are on. Yeah, mostly her own. Say, what goes on? What happened with Kenny? Well, he got an interview with Lionel Fontaine. But, like you said he would. Oh! Oh! Deflation's got me. <laughs> Listen, are you trying to kid us, Sue? Now, look me straight in the eye. Why, no, why should I lie? I used to be a smart girl, so they tell me. <laughs> um, Nikki, is, um, Kenny named Mary? Oh, so you're interested in him, too, hmm? No, but you know, he seemed to like Myra pretty well. Fine thing. I send you two over to see my boyfriend, and what do you do? You try to rope him in. I'm sorry, Nikki. I didn't know he was your boyfriend. Oh, she's just <laughs> You knew that your friend Hoffman was a Nazi agent, and you knew that he was planning to blow up this defense plant, didn't you? Cut! All right, boys, moving in for a close-up. All right, get the scope over here, boys. Yeah. All right, kiddies. That's... You stay here while I see Mr. Fontaine. This is going to take some smart handling to get him to get you a test. Now be sure and look to Muir. That's what he wants. Kenny. Yeah? Like this? That's good. Oh, wait a minute. Ah, now don't move. Hello, Fontaine. Uh, hello, Kenny. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Yeah. Say, I want you to do me a favor. Don't tell me you want me to test one of your trained animals for the part of Laurie. No, what I want you to do is not test one of my clients for the part of Laurie. What do you mean by that double talk? Look, I'm in kind of a spot. I got a girl over here from my hometown, and I know her folks and the kid she's going to marry. And Well, she's out here on a trip and has got an idea she might crash the movies. Of course, she's beautiful, all right, but I don't think she's got any particular talent, so I want her to go home and lead a normal life and not break her heart around here. Can you do me a favor and discourage her? No, oh, now, don't pull that line on me. You ought to know better than to pull that old stuff on me. But if I think she's got talent, I'll give her a test. Where is she? Over there. Sorry, Kelly, she's not the type. Well, thanks anyway. Oh, uh, uh, how about some gin rummy tonight? No, I'm sorry, I'm very busy. Same place? <laughs> Oak. <laughs> Finally beat you. That's thirty-seven dollars you owe me. <laughs> I'll tell you what I'll do. If you give that client of mine a test, I'll call it square. I don't do things that way. It's your deal. Ah. It's four o'clock in the morning. I'm going home. Oh, come on, just one more game. You said that four hours ago. Well, you know I can't sleep. Oh, come on, what do you say? You don't do me any favors, so why should I do any for you? All right, you win. I'll tell you what I'll do. You play a couple of more hours, and I'll give the girl a test. Right. And you won't regret it, either. Okay. Goodbye, sir. Dimitri is always glad to see you. Tomorrow, cold balls with glamour. Quick, hurry, hurry, hurry. Pardon me, are you Mr. Dimitri? I am the Dimitri. I've come to see you about a job. Oh. Mm -hmm. Could be. Could be. And now Dimitri would like to see some cheesecake. Cheesecake? The, the games. Uh... Oh. Oh, you mean them. Um... But of course, Dimitri have his reputation to uphold. Not bad, not bad. Good. 
Any experience? No, I've always worked in the library. No, that's terrible. Oh. Well, we maybe get pro and drop. Uh, waste is, uh... Shoulders, uh, so so. Well, I told you what we do. You give your telephone number to my secretary, and I call you in maybe two, maybe three weeks. In two or three? Oh no, I, I've got to have a job right now. Dimitri has spoken, and you can be thankful I did not say no. Absolutely. Thanks. Mm, hello. Oh yes. Oh, well, that's fine already. Well, come over and do them for me. Oh, about half an hour? Right. Well, I got a demo. At Dimitri's? No, I have to wait a couple weeks for that one. But I start work tomorrow at Benny's Beanery. Oh. I see you took my advice for your sister. <laughs> come on, Sue, let's go over to Kenny's. He has a test all set for me. He wants me to go over the line. A test? Mm -hmm. Oh, that's wonderful. I want you to go with me, you know. I have to keep this strictly professional. Such a sweet girl. I love you more than... No, no, Mara. You can do better than that. You've got to give it more room. Oh, I'll give it more room when I get on the set. Listen, Cupcake. Fontaine is not going to like it that way. This is a love scene, baby. This is the reason the gal gets killed. And when she goes home, she finds the wife there with a gun. You get it? Ah, uh, let me do it. Now, watch me. This is how you say it to her. Ever since the day I first saw you, I knew I couldn't live without you. See? No. Oh, excuse me. Darling, I'm yours forever. And then you kiss him like this. Now watch. Can he come out and go? That'll give you a rough idea. Oh, come on, let's do it again now. And really give us some more, Myra, will you? Who's that? Did your father wear a mustache? Why, no. I'm sure mine did. I know just how he must have looked like. Oh, uh, come on, we've got our sleeping to do. Let's get busy. All right. Egg sweets to the bar? No, far is plenty. Excelsior's starting auditions for Dancing with the Morrow pretty soon, and I'm to take you over there. Oh, thank you. Uh, oh. That's well. Ethel, we've got a 2.30 date with Carlton. He wants to hear you read those lines. Oh, gee, I hate to read lines, folks. Why can't I do something I know like? Like what? Wait a minute. It's getting rather cloudy, isn't it? I hope it doesn't stop Tea Biscuit from winning. You know, Jen? Jen, you plant the dahlias over here. Well, why are you looking at me so strangely? Is there something wrong? Funny. I can still feel the sun in my hand. Jen? Jen? There's something wrong. It's getting dark. I'm going blind. No, honey, that's too heavy. Try something light. I have this. Oh. You know why I saw Don Jones last night? And you want to know what that big, tall, handsome guy said to me? Why, he said, Faye, you're beautiful. I said, now, you wouldn't kid a gal, would you? He said, oh, Faye, Faye, I could just about die for you. 
I said, yeah, but what good would you be to me if you were dead? I still don't like it, honey. You get up and get ready. Okay. Come right down here. Hey. See, I wish I was as good as the mockingbird. <laughs> well, I guess I better go breakfast. Goodbye, Mr. Uh, goodbye, honey. <laughs> Come in, girl. Well, what's the matter with me? Don't I even break an introduction? I'm Danny Hausman from the Merton Salesman Agency. Oh, yes, I've heard of the Salesman Agency. I'm Ira Norm. How do you do? Oh, this is my sister, Sue. How do you do, Sue? How do you do? Say, I'd like to talk to you. I don't remember seeing you around Girls Town before. You been here long? No, we just arrived. Mm-hmm. How's about us getting together sometime? Maybe I can get a test for you somewhere. Oh, but I already have an appointment for a test. Yeah? Who got it for you? Kenny Lane. That poodle peddler? Oh, you're kidding. No, she isn't. Mr. Lane's been very nice to her, and he did get her the appointment. Well, I'll have to leave now, Myra. I'm very glad to meet you, Mr. Halvin. Bye. Well, it's okay with me if you want to be the laughing stock of town, having an animal agent handle you. But honestly, what you need is an influential agent who can tell the studios what to do. Say, have you got any pictures? Well, I've uh, got some in here. Oh. Oh, well, I don't mean leg art. Well, those are all right for somebody like Kenny Lane, but uh, they wouldn't impress Mr. Salesman. He means portrait studies, dear. Not only portrait stuff, but dramatic poses. You know, Miss Norman playing Camille. <laughs> she looks better as Lady Godiva. Well, I'll see what I can do about getting those portraits, Mr. Hasman. Okay, Miss Norman. Well, hello. Hi, Ken. Oh, Nick. Hi. Hi. Kenny, when am I going to get a definite date for the test? Well, I guess you children won't talk business. And I'm going to take my afternoon nap. You wheel me out, yes? Goodbye, Mom. Bye, Kenny. I haven't a definite date yet, Mara, but uh, I brought along a contract for you to sign. With the studio? No, with the Kenny Lane Agency. Oh, I'll read it over tonight. Oh, Kenny, uh, would you like to go over the lines with me again? Uh, of course I'd like to. Uh, we'd better go upstairs. Do you think it's all right? Well, yes, you heard Mother Lorraine saying that you wanted to take a nap. We might disturb her. Come on. Oh, my darling. From the day I first saw you, I knew I couldn't live without you. I felt that way, too. Uh, uh, and this is where you kiss her. Oh, let's do it again. I want to get the feel of it. How is that? Oh, it's okay. Uh, of course, it's corny, Myra, but uh, practice makes perfect. Kenny, don't you think I should have some real professional pictures taken in various poses, such as uh, Camille and different parts like that? Would be a bad idea. I uh, ordered some pictures, but I haven't got enough money to pay for them right now. Of course, Sue has a job, but... She feels as though she should give what little she makes to uh, Mother Lorraine. Oh, I think so, too. Oh, you do? Oh, darling, I knew you would. Look, it, it won't take very much, only about $20, and I'll pay you back after my first week's salary. Don't worry about it. Shall we uh, rehearse again? done anything. Mm, don't I know it, but who'd believe it? Uh, oh. uh, is it? Is it much of a drop? Oh, not many feet. There's a garden below. I should have stuck to my animals. Uh, there's a fellow outside who wants to see me. Well, who is it, Penny? Well, confidentially, he looks like a high-class tramp. Penny, that's no way to talk. Show the gentleman in. Okay. Of course, if he's one of your eastern relatives. I was only kidding. <laughs> you, Mrs. Lorraine? Yes. I'm Joe Barker. That may mean anything to you? Joe Barker? Barker? Yeah, I'm sorry. 
I'm Sally's father. Kind of surprised, huh? I thought you would be. Sally's father? Well, you can't be Sally's father. Her mother told me he was dead. Uh, she was just dreaming out loud. I don't look very dead, do I? I can't believe it. You were Sally's father. Nobody else. The proud father come to see his darling daughter. But Sally believes you're dead, too. Oh, I'll soon straighten her out on that. When she gets scrapping around with me a bit, she'll find out I'm pretty much a live wire. Well, you can't take her away. Sure. I want to make up for all those years I neglected her. I made a big winning this year on the horses. And we're going to have a big time till that's gone. But Sally's very happy here. Oh, she's just like all other kids. She'll be just as happy with me when she gets to know me. I won't let you take her away. How do I know you're really her father? I got proof. And I can get a court order for custody of the kid. Now listen, Mr. Bach. I love Sally. Sally loves me almost as much as if I were her own mother. You can't take her away from me. Sally needs a home and stay here where she can go to school. You can come and see her. Come and see her as often as you like. Only please don't take her away from me. Please. Listen, lady. I thought it all over before I came here, so let's skip the argument. If she don't like it with me, she can come back. But don't you see, Mr. Barker. You'll ruin the child's life. She's at an age when she ought to have a home and not travel from city to city, living in hotels, meeting people that you have to associate with. Don't worry about her. I told you, my mind's made up. Mother! Oh, Mother! Let's tell you now. Do me a favor, will you? Don't tell her who I am right away. Let me spring it on her easy like. Oh, excuse me, Mother. I didn't know you had company. That's all right, darling. Come in. Sally, this is a very old friend of mine, mister. Joe. Just call me Joe. Hello, Joe. I'm happy to meet you. How was your music lesson today, Joe? Well, we've been taking music lessons, huh? How do you like them? Oh, it's super. Of course, it takes a lot of my time, but it's worth it. You bet it is. Sally, why don't you play something for us? Oh, Mother Lorraine, she doesn't want to listen to amateur night. Sure. <laughs> I'd like it. Will you, Sally? Okay. But don't forget, it's your own fault. This is the song I practiced today. I better sing it while it's hot. Ain't you gonna smile? It's lots of fun. Won't you change your style? Like the sun. Put on your brand new singy song face. Why do you always wear a long face the wrong place? Oh, ain't you gonna Something to it. Turn on your personality. Gee, ain't you gonna smile for me? That was fine, darling. Come here. Now, Sally, I have something to tell you. This gentleman is. Oh, let me tell her. You see, I'm a friend of your father's. I knew him before he died. A friend of my father's? Did you know him very well? Well, him and I was pretty good pals, you might say. Gee, you're going to tell me all about him, aren't you? You see, he died when I was just a little baby. But I got a mental picture of him, just how he looked. Have you? Yeah. I pictured him as sort of a tall, broad-shouldered man with, you know, gray hair around the temple. You know, sort of a movie star type with a mustache and twinkling eyes, and a nice broad smile, and maybe a dimple in his chin. Am I warm? Do you look like that? Well, you're pretty close. Except the mustache. You didn't wear enough. No, that doesn't matter. Just to think you knew him. Tell me some more about him. Well, it's, it's been quite a while. See, it took me so long to find you. But I do remember he told me to tell you that he, well, he loved you, and he loved your mother, and he was sort of sorry he hadn't been a better husband and a better father. Oh, we didn't blame him. Mother says he was just born sort of irresponsible and just couldn't help it. Did you know my mother, too? Yeah, but only slightly. See, I, I met her with your father. She was a wonderful lady, Sally. Yes, she and Mother Lorraine are almost alike. <laughs> Come to think of it, they are. Oh, I, I almost forgot. 
Your father told me to, to give you this. It's about 3,000 bucks there. He told me to tell you to use it for your school and your music lessons. Uh, Mrs. Uh, I mean, Mother Lorraine better take care of it for you. Well, I gotta be gone. Now look, Sally, will you say a little prayer for your Uncle Joe tonight, will you? I will, Uncle Joe. Well, so long. And I'll say a little prayer for Sally's father. I just found out he's a pretty fine person. Oh. Bye. Goodbye, Uncle Joe. Goodbye, Joe. Where'd you get those? Like them? Hey, they're beautiful. Where did you get those? Kenny ordered them and didn't even take the trouble to pick them up. There's a set of duplicates over there if you'd like to see them. I'm going to take these over and show Hausman. See you later. Wonderful. What you gonna do with those? I'm gonna take them to Kenny Lane on my way to work. Who's that? Penny, that's me. Why, you're beautiful. Oh. Why don't you take Kenny your picture, too? Penny, <laughs> you know I'm no actress. So what? Maybe if he saw a little more of you, you'd see a little more of him. Better now. So the squirrel won't make an exit. Well, no wonder you let all the extras feed him candy. You'd be sleepy too. No, no, no. Squirrels don't hibernate this time of the year. Ouch! Sue, just a minute. Did you hurt yourself? Be careful! Oh. I'd throw that rug out, only he used to be one of my best actors. <laughs> You realize that. But can't you understand? I love it. No, 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 Miss Norman. You're reading it as though you were giving it to some people at the local charity club. But can't you understand? He loves me. I, I mean... Oh, no. I, I, no, no, no. He's mixing her all up. Kenny Lane was right about this girl. She can't do it. Tell him. Uh, she didn't come with Kenny. She told me she was changing agents and to call her direct. Well, I'll tell her myself. Miss Norman, I'm afraid you're not ready for a test. And it's much worse to make a bad test than none at all. Oh, please, Mr. Fontaine. I heard her do the part a little while ago, and she remembered it then. Oh, please give her another chance. Come on, Myra. He's my husband. Well, can't you understand? I love him. Hey, well, that's fine. Say, do you know the wives' lines? Yes, sir, I, I rehearsed the lines with Myra. All right. We'll try it again. And you cue Miss Norman. Come on, Herb, step out. All right, girls. Action. What do you think you do? He's my husband. 
It can't go on this way. Can't you understand? I love him. Well, only that. I could have a little more than pity for you. But it isn't. He loves you. We were drawn to each other. I, I hope that it might be just an infatuation. And I waited for him to tire of you. Right. Tell the operator to run that test again. Max, I detect a spark in that girl. Yeah. Yes? Just a moment, please. New York calling you, Mr. Max. Hello, JB? Uh, what's the final release date now? Well, that's two weeks sooner than I expected. Oh, I guess we can make it all right. Yeah, I'm getting a girl now for that Lori part. She ought to make good copy. Beauty contest winner. Yeah, ought to be good for leg art. Well, you'll get those reports tomorrow. So long. Wait a minute, wait a minute. We're not thinking about the same girl. I meant the one who was throwing the cues. Of the two, I'll take the Ohio Valley glamour girl. Let's get someone that can give us some newspaper stuff. Oh, I, I grant you, she's a natural for the Peekaboo magazines, but I can get a more solid performance out of the other one. And you, you might have a new star on your hands. I don't believe in these shots in the dark, but we'll send for them both. And if the publicity department can do anything with that mouse, it's okay with me. But my money's on the bathing beauty. I'm inclined to disagree with you. Kenny? Yes? Will you do me a little favor? Is that why you came all the way over here to see me? Look out, Kenny! Look out! You know that isn't the only reason I came over here to see you. What made you so grumpy? I've got my reasons. But get on with whatever you've got on your mind, Delilah. Well, Kenny, you know how I've always felt about you and how grateful I am for what you've done. Only you. You said yourself you only handle animals. Well, you must admit it puts me in a rather ridiculous light having an animal agent for a representative. Meaning that you want to get yourself a new agent, is that it? Oh, I don't want to, Kenny. Only, only I have a chance to sign up with a really big agent, Merton Selzman. Why didn't you tell me you were taking that test, Myra? How did you find out about the test? Well, I'll tell you. There's a thing in Hollywood known as the Studio Grapevine. And it's never failed me yet. Go ahead and sign with the salesman office. Do anything you like. It means nothing to me. But take one last word of advice, Mara. Hollywood is full of people like you who came here thinking the only way to make good in the industry was by double-crossing everybody with whom they came in contact. None of them made good, because this town has no use for phonies. Thanks for the lecture. Well, is that all? Yes, that's all. Only I hope that the next time I go back to my policy, somebody gives me a good swift kick in the pants. So long, dog catcher. This is Mara Norman speaking. Who's calling? Did you say Preference Studios? That's what I said. Preference Studios calling. This is Mr. Coffer of the casting department. Step over to the studio about five. If you have an agent, bring him along, too. Thanks very much, Mr. Coffer. I'll be there. Oh, yes, sir. Uh, who was that other girl that worked in the test with you? Why, uh, uh, what do they want her for? I really couldn't say, but I was told to have you both here. Will you get a hold of her and bring her along? Yes, yes, of course. Great. I'm back to peddling squirrels and monkeys, which is right where I belong. How's the pot roast today? Mm, it's all right, if you like pot roast. Oh, Kenny, I'm awfully sorry. Myra shouldn't have done that to you after all you did for her. Skip it, honey. My policy is to handle only animals, so why should I change now? Well, um, personally, I think it's a mistake for every girl who thinks she's cut out for a career. Don't you? Hmm? Yeah, you bet. And personally, I think if a girl really wants a career, Best career in the whole world is to help a husband. Uh, don't you think so? Hmm? Yeah, I guess so. Hey, waitress, what about that cup of coffee? Oh, just a minute. Oh, I forgot all about him. Uh, did you say spaghetti and meatballs? N no, I, I, uh, I said 
pot roast and coffee. Pot roast and coffee? Well, um, what I meant was, I think every man needs a woman to help him. Uh, with his business, you know. You know, I've, I've read a lot about it. For instance, there was uh, Napoleon and Josephine and Lord Nelson and Lady Hamilton and Ferdinand and Isabella. They sort of helped each other, didn't they? Huh? Send her right in. Hello, Miss Norman. How do you do? Fine. Now we'll get a hold of Maxwell Fontaine. Well, where's the other girl? Oh, what do they want with her? Oh, uh, someone saw her in a test and wanted her for something else. Oh, that's too bad. She was, uh, she was here yesterday, but she's gone back home. She was here on a visit and wanted to see the studio, so I brought her over with me. But uh, I guess it's just as well. She's not an actress anyway. Hmm, I see. Well, this is one I'm going to pass along to Maxwell Fontaine. Sequence beginning with the Brooklyn Bridge, page 42 requires a readjustment of tempo and essential design to, to pyramid the character's reactions into an overlapping crescendo. This reconstructs and integrates the mood of the clip joint so that the final solution revolves around the collision, as it were, of opposing factors in space. So this is where you hang out, Lionel. What's the matter? No chairs? I think better on my feet. Anyway, people stay too long. Uh, where's the other girl, the one with you on the test? Miss Norman says she left town yesterday. Where'd she go when she leave? She went back to Ohio. She was just here on a visit. What was her name? Her name was Jane Thompson. Look, Lionel, we're wasting a lot of time. We're doing this for publicity, and we're not getting any. Sam, take this girl right over to the still gallery. And uh, you stand by for a call. We'll probably get to this tomorrow. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Mr. Maxwell. I'll be waiting. This way, Miss Norman. Max, have you asked me? That girl's lying. For the love of Mike Lionel, what difference does it make? The girl's adequate for the part. I've built the entire publicity campaign on her. Well, I can get some kind of performance out of anybody with enough work. But we still have. Say, say, maybe Kenny Lane knows this girl. I'll have Coffer contact him. Miss Nevin, get Sam Coffer for me. All right, let's get this thing settled. You're two days behind schedule now. 25 bucks a day for Ajax? That lion doesn't like to work in B pictures anyway. Oh, that's more like it. Twenty-seven fifty. Okay. Well, hello, Sue. What are you doing here? You left this at the restaurant, and I thought while I was here, I might be able to help you in the office. Oh, gee, thanks. Say, I have to go out to Excelsior for a while. Will you stay here and answer the phone? Oh, all right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Kenny Lane there? This is Mr. Coffer of Prepton Studios. We're looking for a girl named Jane Thompson. Jane Thompson? Well, I'll give Mr. Lane the message. Tell him it's very urgent. She's the girl who's in the test with Myra Norman. Well, isn't Myra Norman going to get the part? Not if we can find the other girl right away. Do you know her? Why, I'm not sure. Well, does Kenny Lane know her? I, I don't know. Well, have him call me back, will you? Thanks. I checked with Kenny Lane. He doesn't know who Jane Thompson is. That's right. I'm so sorry. Myra, I want to tell you something. And I want to tell you something. Now I know why you rehearsed. 
Mr. Royce part with me and angled your way into the test just so you could get the part away from me. Why, Myra, you know very well I never had any such intention. No? Well, I happen to know better. Maybe you don't know as much as you think. And maybe I know a great deal more than you think. That's gratitude for you. I bring you out here with me and then you try to double-cross me. You're just making that up because you're shallow and conceited. Your pride's hurt. I didn't want to believe what everybody told me about you because you were my own sister. I've admired and looked up to you all of my life. You're cold and selfish. You've only tried to use me like you've tried to use Kenny. You don't have to worry. I'm not going to interfere in your life. You can have a career as far as I'm concerned. Where are you going, Sue? I haven't decided yet, but I wouldn't stay in this room another minute with you. I'll find a room someplace else. Kenny will help me. Oh, Kenny. So that's it. You're not satisfied to interfere with my life. You have the scheme behind Nikki's back, too. You better explain that, Myra. Oh, playing innocent again. I suppose you don't know that Nikki and uh, Kenny are engaged. Engaged? For just saying that, I, I don't believe it. You mean you don't want to believe it? Nikki said he was her boyfriend, but the girl said she was only fooling. Sue, uh, let's not fight. Uh, perhaps I has been a little unfair. Maybe I'm to blame, too. But I, I just took it for granted that you knew about Nikki and Kenny. And uh, if Kenny has led you on, he ought to be ashamed of himself. He has not led me on. I, I wish you luck, Myra. Please, Sue, uh, tell me where you're going. Going home. I still have my bus ticket. I guess that's where I belong. Oh, I, I hate to see you leave. But I guess that would be best. Laughing boy, what's the matter? I don't know. Business is great, but I I feel completely so what. Something you ate, no doubt. Maybe. No. Well, I only had pot roast. Well, maybe you're working too hard. Pot roast. You know, Nikki, most really great men have had some woman helping them in their career. But they see things that men don't. Yeah, about the only thing a man ever sees is another woman. Look at Napoleon and Josephine. Lord Nelson, Lady Hamilton. Ferdinand and Isabella. Now, just a minute, Ferdinand. If you're thinking about Myra, you've got a bad steer. No, I was thinking of pot roast. Oh. <laughs> no, I mean Sue. Sue? Now you're talking. Why don't you do something about getting her in the picture? Hey. Oh, nonsense. You've given birth to a sensational idea. Wouldn't that burn Myra to a crisp? Oh, I hadn't thought about that. I kind of like it. So do I. I'll start right now. Now? You're cooking with... <laughs> Why don't you let him run your business? He knows more about it than you do. Yes, yes, Fontaine. I've got half the staff out looking for her now. Yeah, I'm doing everything I can for you, pal. Everything. Every time the Fontaine does a picture, he turns the studio upside down. Hello? Yeah, yeah, Bill. No luck yet? Well, keep trying. Yes, Fontaine is on my ear every five minutes. He's going to shoot the scene this afternoon. Yes. Hello, Sam. I can't talk to you now, Kenny. Come back some other time. I'll only take a minute. I want to show you a picture. Talk to me later, Kenny. I'm too busy. Hello, Vic? You haven't? Will you try the radio stations? The hotels? You have? Well, listen, try the drugstore. They have everything. Sam? I, uh... Are you still here? Listen, Kenny, I'm right in the midst of a private little nervous breakdown. You have to pick a time like this to sell me a train seal or a trick goose. But I'm only trying to get you to look at a picture of a girl. A girl? Don't say it. Don't say it. If it wasn't for a girl, I wouldn't be going crazy right now. Listen, Kenny, haven't I always been nice to you? Haven't I been your friend? 
Now get out of here before I throw you out! She's a brunette, about five foot three. A lovely girl, yeah. That's right. Oh, don't tell me what I said. I know what I say when I say it, and I know what I said. Yes, sir. Now go get that character actor. Yes, sir. Oh, I'm in a bad mood. Quiet! Mr. Fontaine wants to think. Can I talk to Mr. Fontaine? I wouldn't. Why? Oh, he's hot in a firecracker. Looking for a certain girl and nobody can find her. What? Then I've got just the doctor ordered. Hello, Fontaine. I'm busy right now, Kenny. Come back and see me later. I'll only take a minute. I want you to look at a picture. I told you I was busy. It can wait, can't it? Well, uh, how about some gin rummy? Maybe it'll settle your nerves. Yeah. Same place? Hey, get out of here, will you? I told you I was busy. All right, you've convinced me. But I've got something in here you'll be crazy about when you finally get time. I have a girl in my office tomorrow morning about 10 o'clock. Yes. Hey, why all the hilarity, Sam? Oh, I can't find that girl for Fontaine. Now I have to tell him. He'll fuss around, lose a half a day, and the casting office will take the rap as usual. It's just like you guys. Go crazy trying to find somebody just because they're hard to get when all the talent you want's right under your nose. Now, I've got a girl here that... Are you going to start that all over again? I don't want to see her. Hey, what are you... That girl, Jane Thompson. Where? That Where? girl in the picture, Jane Thompson. No, Jane Thompson, that's Sue Norman. Well, can't can you get, 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 get a hold of her right away? You mean Sue? No, I mean Jane. You mean who? Jane Thompson, the girl in the picture. That's Sue Norman. Well, Sue, Lou, Jane, Dane, what's the difference? Can you get her here by 2 o'clock? Well, sure I can. What? Why? Why? He wants to know why. Mr. Fontaine! I found her! But, Sam, I... Sue? Sue? Why, Kenny, what are you doing here? Where's Sue? Isn't she working? No, I went to the restaurant and the manager said she'd quit. Listen, Mara, I have a hunch you know where Sue is, and you better spill it quick. Fontaine wants her for the part of Laurie, and I gotta get her to the studio before 2 o'clock. Why, Kenny, you know very well if I knew where Sue was, I'd tell you. I don't believe you. But I do believe you know where Sue is. Now, where is she? Kenny, stop, you're hurting me. I'm not kidding, Mara. You better tell me quick if you don't want to shake it out of you. Hey, what goes on here? Come on, where is she? Where's who? <laughs> She's gone home. Who's gone back. home? Is that true? Word of honor. Now, Kenny, will you please let me up? I've got to get the studio oh. by two. A very good reason for you not to get there. Nikki, take care of her and see that she doesn't leave this room. I'm going to find Sue. Okay. Sue! Oh, come on, come on. Oh. Get in there. Nikki, get me out of here. Yeah, come on. Kenny, Hey, Kenny! Wait for me. Nikki, I told you to watch Myra. Oh, well, she can't get away. I've got her locked in my clothes closet. What's this about Sue? Wait a minute. Where are you going? We're going down to the bus station to get Sue. What makes you think you'll find Sue at the bus station? Well, Mara said she was leaving town. Well, now, Kenny, if I were a young man like you, I'd stop and think this over. And I'd probably come to the conclusion that Sue wouldn't do anything without talking to Mother Lorraine about it. That's right. Where is she? Well, now, Kenny, if I were a young man like you, I'd think it over some more. And I'd probably remember that Mother Lorraine wouldn't break a confidence. Now, Mother Lorraine, never mind the double talk. Please give us a clue. Sorry. But on the way to the bus station, will you stop at Dimitri's drive-in and bring me a glamour sandwich? Dimitri's? Come on, Kenny. Come Thanks, on. Mom. Myra, I've been practicing. Boy, is this a break for me. 
Well, who locked you in? Oh, never mind about that. I'm out and in time, too. Where are you going, Mara? Preppin Studios. And after that, the sky's the limit. Mara, you're not leaving Gilson. No, that's what you think. Mara. Please, hadn't you better reconsider? Of course, if you aren't happy, I can't keep you here. I think you'd better stay until you're sure of something. Oh, but I am sure. I've got my break and I'm on my way. Now, if you'll hurry, I'll have you downstairs. No, Myra. Go ahead. Okay. I'll be right back. What about oh. Nikki? Come on, we gotta get to the studio. What studio? What are you talking about? Sue, we've been looking all over town for you. Kenny's got a job for you. What are you trying to make of my place? A public playing ground? Are you trying to smash my business? So that's the why you were so glad to see me. All with the agent. And, and I thought you... Oh, for the love of Mike, Sue, don't you understand? I've got Myra's part for you in Fontaine's picture. I don't want Myra's part. And I wouldn't take it away from her in the first place. In the second place, I've got a job. You not no more, you don't got no job, you fire. Sue, will you listen to me? This is a chance of a lifetime. Fontaine wants you. What do you want to work in a dump like this for? No, he calls my joint a dump. Give me a paper, oh, a pencil. Yeah. She's fired. Sue, will you come with me? No, I wouldn't go any place with you, and you can go back and tell Myra. Oh, that's gratitude. I lock your sister in my closet so you can get the part, and now you don't want it. Come on, Sue. Oh, oh no, my uniform. Let me go, will you? My uniform. Oh, come here, come here. Come Sue, here. my here. uniform. Let me go, will you? Here, here's your tray. My uniform. My uniform. And here's your I, uniform, oh. glamour puss. Blackout. My uniform. I've lost my balance. I heard Myra pounding upstairs and went to let her out. I don't see how you got up there. Oh, gee, it was all my fault. Oh, no, Nikki, dear, don't blame yourself. I, I just got too upset when Myra went. That's the first time a girl has left us like that. Isn't she coming back? I'm afraid not, dear. She took all of them. Hmm. I was just like her to walk out when she was getting a break. That's gratitude. Yeah, we never had a girl walk out on girls' town before. You never had a girl like Myra before. Oh, don't be unkind, Kenny. Oh, sorry. Kenny, would you take me to Mr. Fontaine? Anything you say. Here? What? Well, that's what I've been trying to do. Come on. I'll okay. pull you on the way. Sound ready? Camera ready? Okay, take the stand in, out. All right, Miss Norman. Oh, I'm, I'm ready. <laughs> Here, Myra. Norman, the publicity department would like to make some pictures of you. Oh, they would? Yeah, you know, beauty contest, winner starts a stand-in. Well, I, I guess a wife can be an actress too, can't she? Uh-huh. Uh, that is, if she doesn't work at it uh, too hard. <laughs> 